Day one of the build, you can see the digger is on site and what an impressive machine. The stonemason came this morning and marked out all the areas. So now we know what we're doing and we've got levels there. We know where the size of the building is, that's the, all the distances, but there's a lot of soil to dig out. But I feel I've got good people here that are organizing it properly, quickly and efficiently. So um, yeah, I'm really excited. So we're into the afternoon now and I have to say I'm really impressed by the speed of these guys. You can see they dug out a lot of it. We have a like a riv, a little riv of rock running through the centre that's going to cause a little bit of issue but we're not going very deep into that and I'll turn this around so you can see we've got to work on that. What he's doing at the moment he's just finishing skimming off the surface and the topsoil. I've had to cut a few more trees down that I planted years ago that were just um, common sycamore so I've cut them cut them up made more room we've actually filled the whole area here with soil um, it's a bit of a mud bath because uh, it was raining this morning but it's drying out now but this soil is going to be spread inside here and also um, it's good soil so that will just be used up in there that's not a problem and now we have enough space to tip the rest of the soil but we're also going to scrape this area clean here make this area bigger take out that fence post and the first shrub on the end and that will give more room for the cement lorry to get in as well so it's kind of we're juggling everything around in a small area but it actually seems to be working out really well the two stonemasons came this morning they put their level in and this is the size of the building so it's a pretty substantial size building which is brilliant but this is very very slightly bigger by about 50 centimeters each end longer so it gives us more room to play with while they're doing all the gear inside the digger guy has a level on the actually on the other side of the arm you can just see it now it's like a piece of plastic just above the two pipes that is actually a level that permanently reads out to him inside his cab and he sets the bucket to the level so he knows exactly how deep he has to go with the digger when he's actually digging and it's constantly giving them a readout so that's how you can work out the surface really quick and what he's going to do now is we're going to skim the surface here of the driveway put that saw somewhere else and then we're going to scrape off as much of this stone as we can because there's like a, um, a mountain running through the saw here it's going to cause a bit of a problem but if we can get enough off then the rest of the hardcore will bring up to that level but it's going well so far anyway so i'm just uh, really pleased and it's obviously happened really quickly with the right machine um, it really makes a difference and also when you're set up properly these guys came this morning they worked it all out i've measured it out before but and it's windy as hell but it's dry so we're just digging out the last bits now of the surface then i'll start rearranging the rock inside I don't know if you can hear me because of the wind, but what we're doing here is we're scraping the the entrance way out because we've got to get this cement truck in in a few weeks. And the best person to do that is the digger guy, obviously. But he's um, gonna dig out some of this really hard stone, lay it down there for the entrance way and make good access. But overall, this will, this will help me in the future because I'll need better access anyway. 
um, and I'll be able to drive in and out. But um, we've also removed the gate post because the gate can actually be extended anyway. But we obviously have taken out a little bit of the hedge there, one of the sections, just so we can get better access in. So it's a really good investment. It costs a little bit more, but it will stop all the screw ups later on because you get the cement truck stuck and I can turn here properly when I get deliveries in the future. It's a bit tedious for the digger guy because there's not a lot of room to move, but it's working fine. Day two of the build, and I've been chatting so much, everybody, that I'm losing my voice a bit. But terrific uh, day yesterday, got loads done. I'm gonna show you how we've advanced today. Um, the great news is, it looks like we will be finished tonight or tomorrow, and we have managed to dig out everything that we needed to dig out. So let me first uh, take you around the site. Now it's dug out, you can see the area. I've just come in behind the wall of this old building that was in the existing building to keep out the wind and I haven't got my microphone with me. So I'm gonna just try and do this without that. But this is, if you can see where the digger bucket is up there, that's the square of the building. So it's a nice shape, nice size, 300 square meters, which I know I told you before, but now you can see this is one of the areas that's got underfloor heating. And this is my warming room and extraction room. So really, this is just mental. I'm just so excited about this. So the warming room is going to be approximately five meters. So here, so that's my warming room, this area here. And it's a nice size. I can probably get 20 pallets in here that I can stack hives on. And then I have double doors coming into here. And then this is my extraction room which is heated as well. So it's absolutely massive. Um, the whole idea is the extraction machine will probably be approximately kind of here, on this part in front here. So it'll be up, and it's difficult to explain. I might try and, if, if, if I can mark it out tonight, I might come and mark it out and video where things are gonna be, but it's just to give you some idea. And then at the end of the room, I've got doors that will go through, and there's another room gonna be here will go through to the next side but then that leaves this area free as well so I'll just spin round and you can see it's a bit bright the sunshine I'll just try and get out of that and the wind so the reason why they've dug this down more is because obviously it's going to be un have underfloor heating put in it and they've got to build up further from the base but the biggest thing I just mentioned before was that we've managed to dig it out because if we were going to dig it out here we never would have got this bit dug out. So it's just complete luck that I've chosen the part of the land where the heating is gonna be. It can be low enough just about, we've just about done it. So the top of the build, that's, I don't know if you can see that level there. We've had to dig out a lot here because it was high at this end. But we got it out, you can see the rock they had there, look at that. But if you look up there, that, that red mark on above the wood there, that's the top of the slab. So then you can see the slab goes all the way down here, but it'll all be one level when it's done, but we had to incorporate it lower one area to take the concrete 
and all the sub base and the insulation for the main building as well as the slabbed area so as well as the insulated area for the underfloor heating that's the other link there just to give you some idea so um just getting back to that also we had cables coming in to the shed here that was what well, i put in 18 years ago but because the digger had been working on them, they got a bit crushed and I didn't put them in properly and I didn't have any tubing in around this hose pipe. So the conduit was fine, but the hose pipe was, well, the, not, the, not the hose pipe, the water feed, I should say, it is a proper feed there, that was also damaged. So what I've decided to do is the whole lot's come out but because we found it properly. And now I've just brought it out right back to the start of the building so that when we get our uh, first conduits in there'll be a new sleeve around the water pipe that's just some electrics that we're feeding that house for a small light that goes right up to my house up there through the garden but that will obviously be disconnected so I've just called it up for now but what I'm saying is you've got to get your first in, uh, conduits in correctly so I know that this is already on site that water pipe will then be re-sleeved and then a new feed that goes into the building then it'll go off around the building but um, that is the original conduit I put in that goes right up to my house and that's what my internet will be on because we're getting fiber optic here soon but I'll have a network link um, cat 6 cable that goes right up from here up to my house and this will then go off to wherever in the building I decide to have it coming in. But um, it was just to say that you've got to get all this right. And it is done right. And I can't believe how well it is. So behind me is one of the piles of topsoil that is obviously absolutely gargantuan. But the great thing is, we just found out this morning that the guy down the road is doing a big building project and he needs topsoil. So he's gonna be able to take three or four trailers of that, which will clear that. And this is where my slab will go for unloading, for, for, lo for loading whatever, because obviously the entrance to the building will basically be where the tractor is. And they'll do drive a little bit more to the left, more centralized, but that'll be the entrance to the building. So you can see how it's kind of gives you the idea of how it's taken shape. Oh, there's a long way to go obviously but i'm kind of super delighted that a we're going to be able to shift all this crap but it is all good topsoil that and it's a big amount and b we've redone the road as well because this was really important to get done properly this has all been dug out this whole area and the ground has been replaced with stone that we took off the site and the funny thing is, when you move stone from one area to the other, it actually reminds me of beekeeping because it's funny the, the plant guys or the, the soil moving guys, in France they call them terrasse or terrasse. These guys, that's all they do. They move, they're juggling stuff on the side. So they'll dig out an area and take the topsoil off. And they've got to put that somewhere. And then they get the stone out and they're saying, well, what we can do is we can dig this topsoil off and put the stone here to get rid of it. So the whole of that area leading right down to the entranceway has had stone put on it and the slopes have been made better and they put a top dressing of like a zero tront it's called, or zero 030, that's the word. Um, and then a little bit more to finish off here to use up the last stone. But it's like us, when we're beekeeping, we're just moving stuff from A to B the whole time and then moving it back to A again because then A is free and stuff like that. Um, it, it's just juggling a material and it will cost me a bit more. There's always hidden expensive, but having this done, I'll show you what we've done here. We basically, all, I said, all oh, this has had um, new sub base, but underneath it, we basically built a new road in and made the slope wider and, and longer. So it wasn't more of a, an incline here. So I've also made the gate larger. I have to work out something to put a new little gate that side. But it means that if I ever get a really big lorry in, they can get in. So it'll all settle down this. It'll all clean itself up. But overall, it's a fantastic entrance way. Now a lorry, like that tractor, can actually drive right in here and straight in there and I'm right out, which is unbelievable. So it's all really taken shape, you know, massively. 
but I'm glad that these guys are going to be off site because when you think about a digger like that, um, it holds 150 liters in the tank and it lasts for two and a half days. I asked the guy about it and you imagine filling up 150 liters of diesel on its own is probably going to be like 500 quid. Um, but that's give you some idea and you, you know two days of these guys there's i got a price to get this work done but obviously it's increased because we've got material on site but because someone else has had the soil and they've been able to just get it it's literally 150 meters or 200 meters away this other building site which you didn't know about and i know the guy who's doing the building and i know the stonemason that's doing it it's the guy who's helped me right at the start and it's all amazing so it just shows you once you get the word out that you're doing a building and people go, oh, have you got any soil? As long as it's someone who's serious, they want a large amount, you can get rid of a lot quickly. And it means now we've got also two, uh, two or three months now to find, to make sure that the person who wants that topsoil can, can take it and we can work out when it's going to be ready for them or they can take it before. But the whole idea is we'll do it when the digger guy will come back and do the septic tank and all the and spread the soil that's hanging around in the garden there now because we dumped a load in there as well as you can see like more around the side the whole um thing of this building thing is extremely stressful i was literally i haven't done this before i've never project managed a, bit, a thing myself even though the two guys with the stonemasons are like amazing they just know their stuff so does this guy it's it's amazing when you actually get to know people who do this every day and i'm kind of in awe of them because i'm like i could never do this but it's not what i do for my job so but you you kind of just have to what's the word you've got to just eventually trust somebody so you let these guys get on and if you find the right people they do the right job so i'm totally stoked that this is coming together this is the last corner so this is another room the other side this will be have underfloor heating in it as well so i'll have this section and then there'll be another big section over the far side i showed you before that's the warming room and extraction room and in the middle bit is where the um up to about there is where there'll be a separate room that's where all my pipes come together unfortunately my existing pipes that go to the building which will have new cables put in because it means I'll use that room to do my wax melting probably and framework if I need to because it's out the way of the main shed and it's just like everything's just coming together I can't believe that it's just kind of worked out the way it has but I, I know you make your luck but we've got some good luck here so this gives you some idea of the stone he's put down on the ground all through here you know this is investment you've got the machine what i was told yesterday by the two guys who are the stonemasons building the slab was boy you are lucky you got this guy with this machine because they said it has done all this work and it's like water off a duck's back to it it was it, a few bits that were struggling um i I'm, i'll post some video now of the tooth picking away at the stone just taking that toll but it all shattered okay You can see here this is what we're getting but it does seem to break and fissure but this is it that is the final there's a bit more to scrape off here this afternoon but this because this is the second room second area but overall um i'm like i can't believe how well it's gone and now we're going to have a new access road in the cement can be delivered all the time straight in straight out be no dicking around no getting stuck and i have to find someone to pull us out in the future if i want to get a big delivery in it can happen it's just putting those initial things into place properly it might cost you a bit at the start but long term it's the best solution because then you're never having a problem but anyway so what will happen is now he'll come and put a load of sand on here and and a lighter gravel first i think then some sand and then the stonemason was, is going to start i think actually going to start next week because they're super quick super keen how well it's gone 
and they're realizing now that they can just get on with this project and it's probably going to be quicker for them than they thought because I've got everything organized and they've got everything organized and we've swapped drawings we had a site meeting yesterday um, but overall absolutely brilliant at the moment no breakdowns for the digger guys I'm just delighted for them because I feel really bad if something goes wrong like they break teeth off their digger off the bucket or stuff like that um, you always think shit that's going to cost me more they'll find a way to put the price on somehow wouldn't they <laughs> I mean who wouldn't it's just business you know but let me just show you this pick this is like a very very handy tool and it's like well I suppose you'd say it's those things they use for getting boy scouts out of horses hooves <laughs> but it is a really awesome machine and what you see that can do with the right digger you know it's just amazing but what a piece of kit what a setup these guys have been doing it for a long time I asked them cost of the digger there um, the price is about 150,000 euros for a new one and the setup with a with they've got two tractors like that and two trailers you're probably talking 90 to 100,000 pounds for each piece of kit so you're you're dealing with a lot of kit and a lot of high value but um, overall really pleased just show you one more time that's the corner there now sorry about the wind and that's the main area and there's the extraction room and the warming room at the back just lucky that we weren't trying to dig out that part where the trailer is sitting because that's virtually solid stone but we did get it down enough the previous height you can just see how the stone is so enormous the amount but we'll get there it's all good professional guys i'm really delighted can't thank my lucky stars enough that i chose the people that i did and so far so good now it's so it'll be over to the stonemason guys who will be we're going to be putting in conduits next this coming week or this week all the all for the for all the cabling for my things around the workshop so i've got virtually separate my electrician has told me that i need to have really need to have separate plugs for a lot of my bigger equipment which is great but i'm going to put for instance in the extraction room i'm going to have for example a conduit that will come down the middle and i'll be able to have a plug on the inside and one on the outside of the wall which means that i can cream inside or cream honey outside and just have the capability to work both sides so say the extraction room is being used and i've got some honey creaming i can do it outside but in the winter i'm more likely to use one area to work in so the extraction room which is this end we'll have the extraction machine here but there'll be loads of room to work as well and to do jarring to do potting and it'll be kind of in the sterile area which we like to do honey conditioning in so i hope that gives you an idea of what we're doing i'm going to take some pictures after and a little bit more video later on and show you the finished product before the stonemason takes it on and then we'll take that project further anyway i'm super chuffed take care bye for now